I'm live. Let's see, do I have a microphone? Yeah. All right. I'm going to tune. I got chewed out yesterday, or no, a couple days ago, on someone who was like, you should tune before you go live. <laughs> it wasn't one of you. It was somebody, and then they just like nonstop, like 15 comments, and I just went blocked. So I don't know if that means they can't see my channel at all, which actually I almost prefer. So we're gonna do, um, actually this is not a bad um, way to do this too, is I'm gonna go, uh, we're gonna do chord, we're gonna do kind of the same, same lesson we did before uh, that we did in G, we're gonna do in the key of D. So what, what's gonna allow us to do, I, I should probably maybe pick a key that's further from G. Because G is one sharp and D is two sharps. Maybe I go to E instead. It's four sharp. Um, and that way we can kind of uh, get, not only get some new chords, but also, um, uh, you know, learn, again, just kind of reiterate some of the, the chord progression concepts and things like that. Um, and as you hear these chord progressions, you, and these weird chords, the chords that are outside the key, you will start to hear hear them in songs and go, oh, okay, I know what they're doing there. And, uh, you know, like the whole, that whole, you know, the flat major six to the flat major seven. You may be sitting in the car and you may hear the song Happy Together and you may say to your spouse, you may go, oh, they just did a flat major six to the flat major seven to the one at the end of that song. And yet she'll be like, wait, what? <laughs> so... How's it going? Bonnie, Leo, Jim, Ed, Keith, Hook. Hook's back. Haven't seen Hook in a while. Or maybe you've just been quiet. Um, I can assume. Now, I, I'm going to have to leave. I'm going to have to stop early, probably around noon, my time, so about an hour. Um, um, I've uh, We started a project in the house yesterday, and it's going to have to get finished today. It doesn't have to get finished today, but... My friend's coming back over, God bless him. My friend Jim Cavell, who I've known for 30 plus years. And um, he and I do music for TV. And um, so he's coming over to, um, to do so. Uh, we, uh, it, we had a fourth bedroom on our house. Uh, not the previous owner, but the owner before that lived here a long time. And he was a... Uh, he worked for the city as a, a building inspector. So it was funny when I had our, our real estate agent pull the, the uh, permits for this house. It was three pages with the city of Los Angeles. Single space, like dozens and dozens of things that this guy did to the house and got them all permitted. And uh, so it's funny. I mean, the house is great. We love it. But one of the things that they did was uh, between the house and the garage was called, it was a kind of a... a a breezeway, which is like a, an open air passageway, but it's it's got a roof on it. Um, what they did was they closed that off and made it into like a bonus room. Um, and the previous owner had turned it into kind of a man cave slash movie studio. It really wasn't big enough. The the wall they had a this really hideous, and they left it behind, of course. This hideous gothic giant big screen TV thing. And uh, they even left in the, <laughs> the projection TV. It was like 120 inch th giant thing. I got someone to come and take it away for free. You know, I didn't have to pay to have it removed, fortunately. Um, and, uh, you know, and then the gothic thing, I had to pull that out. So basically there's a closet in there, but it's a fourth, technically a fourth bedroom. Um, and now we're putting in a, we're put, bringing in the, we had to buy more paneling and we're bringing in the paneling. It's really nice wood, this wood, uh, solid wood paneling that we're bringing in. Um, 
And we've done that. We framed every. We got. We're putting up the frame for the door and the door, and then we're pretty much done. We put shelves in there, so there's gonna be some storage in there for like instruments, cases, mostly cases, because um, it does back up to the garage. So if the garage gets hot, I don't. That wall may get hot, so I don't want to put anything too valuable in that closet. Um, I want just a, a little tip. If you um, let me open up this window, get a little more light. I don't know if that's better or not, but. Um, if you do have a, a closet that you put your instruments in, I always make it, I always try to make it an interior closet that does not share a wall with the outside, if you can. I know that's not, you may not have an interior closet anywhere in your house, but that's, uh... but anyway, my friend Jim's coming over today and we're going to finish it, I think. I'm pretty sure we'll get it finished today. And we got crown molding, floor, baseboard, that kind of thing. So it's pretty simple stuff at this point. Did I touch my face? Is it buffering? I've got green light here. It looks good right now. I hope it's not buffering. Oh, I'm almost out of coffee. What am I going to do? <laughs> Did I use air quotes too? Dang it. Okay. We got lots of rules here. If you're, if you're new, you're just following for the first time. We've got all these drinking game rules uh, for, the, for the live stream. And uh, if I touch my face, which I'm going to do right now because my nose itches. Uh, if I touch my face, that's a, that's a sip. If I drop my pick, that's a sip. If I drop a thumb pick, that's a double sip, okay? Because uh, you really should never drop a thumb pick. Um, and I did, and that's why I made it a double. If I say there's, there will be no quiz. Oh, I ordered, I saw somebody ordered the mug, which is awesome. I hope I did it right. It looks a little like it's a little off center, but I don't know. You design it yourself, and I really, it wouldn't even let me align it center. It only had left align, I'm like, Give me some options here, you know, when I was designing it on their website. I suppose I could have designed it as a JPEG and then imported it and then put it on the mug, but I just used their, their, you know, graphic designer thing, software built in there. So, you know, I, didn't, I don't think anyone's bought a t-shirt, but I already got $7. I mean, it hasn't shown up yet. I don't think until they ship it or something, but I get $7 for the mug, which is cool. So I ordered one. Um, I, apparently I can order one for myself for like $8 without, cause obviously I wouldn't make any money on that. Um, but it's like a trial run. So, I'll, so it's going to be cool. So I'll have a mug that says there won't be a quiz on this, which I think is hilarious. Who ordered it? Do you know? Hey, B kitty's here. Bruce, how's the, uh, uh, cigar box guitar coming? I should, did you post any uh, pictures or videos or anything? Well, thank you, Gary. Gary's posting the rules here. Yummy cake. Be, be, <laughs> you guys. Okay, so, um, but anyway, oh, you ordered the mug. Hook. Really? You ordered the mug? That's awesome. I, I didn't know that. Okay, so that's, I think it's pretty funny. It's actually a pretty funny mug, and it could be a good conversation starter. Uh, the t-shirts, it's just kind of weird. I mean, I don't know. You order a t-shirt, and it says, there won't be a quiz on this, and you're like, a oh, quiz on what? <laughs> uh... Yeah, so if you want to order the mug, I can put the link up here. It was. It's if you go to my YouTube channel, um, there's all those tabs, you know, videos, community, things like that. Um, and there's one called store. So you can go there and you can see what it looks like. Uh, it's kind of a, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully I designed it all right. I may have to move it, redesign or something. I'm not sure how that works, but here's the link for that. Um, it looks like it's okay. It looks like it's a little close to the handle, but just slightly. So I don't know. I think it'll be great. And it faces out. So when you're holding the mug, it'll say that. Now, the, the shirt, again, the shirts are funny. And then there's a, they had stickers and they'll, you, they had all these. I could have done iPhone cases, which is hilarious. Uh, you know, I don't know why you would have an iPhone case that says there won't be a quiz on this. I could have done colors. I think you might be able to make color choices. I don't know. Um, but I'm not sure if these are actually showing up. Like if I go to any one of my videos, dang, all my videos, my last videos are all the live stream. I have not done, all, since I've live streamed, I think I've only uploaded one video. Um, let me just see if, uh, 
no, I don't see the store here. There's probably, oh no, there's a store. It's on the, okay, cool. It is, it's right there. That's dope. Okay, so that's fine. Also, like I said, I'm continuing to, to uh, conceptualize the whole kind of lesson thing um, as far as the progressive lessons. And it, I think it's gonna be cool. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure, like there's gonna be a warm up, a short warm up, then, you know, it'll say warm up. And then, you know, I'll have a slide that says warm up, and then I'll show the warm up. And then there'll be a slide that says court of the day, boom, and there's the court of the day. And then it'll be strum of the day, and it'll be strum of the day. And, uh, and then there'll be another slide that'll probably say riff of the day. Um, or, yeah, and so it'll be, that'll be some kind of song-based, pseudo-song-based riff. Um, and again, it'll be super duper basic because my thinking is uh, because of my most popular video, again, by far, um, the seven tips for older beginners, a lot of people in their 50s, 60s, even 70s and 80s are commenting and, you know, is, is, am I too old to start? And I'm like, no, but it is really hard to start something new at, the, at 70. Uh, and so playing an E minor chord for someone, you know, might be very difficult at 70. So that's where I'm going to say, we're going to learn one chord and you're going to play a whole note, that kind of thing. So it'll be super basic. And it may be one of those things where you guys are all, I could not even, you could skip the first 30 lessons. Um, and, um, and then I don't know if I'll do a, uh, I could do uh, a Patreon thing. I hate, the reason I've never done Patreon, is, and I've had a lot of people say you should do that, is because I do feel like there's some kind of obligation, especially if people like subscribe to a monthly thing and they're like expect a certain number of videos every month. Um, or if, you know, if there's, if they're just saying, oh, you know, they're committing to paying a dollar for every video. Um, if I did this every day, then that would be kind of unfair because they'd be paying $30 a month to me for doing live stream, which would be kind of, you know, from my perspective, that's awesome. <laughs> right now, somebody's got to give me a dollar. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it would be awesome. But uh, uh, but I just don't I don't know if that's gonna work. And uh, and there's a chance there's a chance that I could go back to doing um, seven days a week with live stream, or maybe five days a week. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm I'm you know reevaluating my life, um, and so we'll see what what happens. But um, Dennis said stop. Let's see. Eleventh uh, commencement. That's dope. Did I say that still? I have not tried Rocksmith. You just got it, right? Oh, no, you have you gotten your cable yet, Dennis? I'm I don't know anything about it. I'm assuming it's something you plug your guitar into and it, you, it tells you to play a note and then it tells you, you got the right note, yay, and you get points and little stickers and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, and hopefully, Bruce, if, you know, you can turn this into a real, like, part-time job making uh, cigar box guitars, if it's worth your time. The, the, I mean, I'm sure it's more worth your time if you can make five necks at a time and five, you know, all that stuff. You can kind of, and you buy more parts in bulk. Um, the other thing is, if you're a reseller, um, I know in, like, California, uh, for a while there, when I had, um, when my band was selling CDs, I applied as a reseller so that I could pay, I wouldn't have to pay sales tax when I bought the CDs, but then I had to pay sales tax when I sold them. Um, and so that was actually more work than it was worth because <laughs> you had to file like monthly statements, how many CDs you sold and send them a check. And it was like, not worth it. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and do the... Um, uh, let's let's do the key of E. That way we're not doing a, a, a key because if I do the key of D after having done the key of G, it's going to be a lot of the same chords. Okay, the key of D has um, a D in it, has an E minor in it, has a G in it, has a B minor in it. So we're you know we're not going to be not that you don't uh, you know already know the chords in the key of D, but we're, we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go up to four sharps. It's kind of irrelevant. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing we did here with these, and that is to, is to make minors and majors. And we may get to that the very, very first day. Um, and so, oh, I didn't scan this, did I? Okay, I'm going to put this on my scanner just to remember to scan this for my for the Discord page, which I'm going to 
I'll grab a link of that for that, an invite link for the Discord page. Okay. All right. So, and then, um, busy, busy. You guys got me busy. Now, Jim's coming over about 12, 15 to do, help me finish the closet in our bonus room. And that, the cool thing about that is I noticed on our house listing that um, some listings had it as a th three and two and some had it as a four and two. Well, you, if you add a bedroom to a house, it can't be called a bedroom if it doesn't have a closet. So, according to real estate agents. Um, and so, uh, you add a closet to a room, essentially, and this room is off on its own in a way. I mean, you have to go through a dining room to get to it, which isn't bad. Uh, kind of a weird place for a bedroom, but technically it could be considered a fourth bedroom. And we've had kids sleep there, you know, when we had kids, the kids over and stuff. So, um, all right. So here's the discord link and there's most of these people are, are regular attenders of that. Um, so if you're, if you've never been to the discord site, you can join up there. I don't think it takes any major effort. Um, but uh, the um, uh, I post a lot of the the paperwork that I create here, um, and some of the JPEGs that I create of the strumming grooves, things like that. I post those all up there if I remember to, and that way you can you can grab them and put them in a a, a Word doc and have a bunch of grooves on a Word doc or whatever, um, and make your own paperwork, you know, make your own uh, practice sheets or whatever from it. But also there, everybody's posting things like their favorite videos, favorite songs, whatever they're talking, they talk about gear. I don't really, I'm not there very often, but, um, but everybody's really pretty cool to each other. And that's important to me. And, um, uh, yeah, well, and, and, uh, and Catherine, I'm going to show you some cheater chords on, on, uh, uh, the key, uh, we're, we're going to do some cheater. So we're probably not going to get past, um, in fact, I did series um, chords in the key of it's in my basics playlist uh, chords in the key of and then I did C D G things like that um, and basically I talk about this very thing the one chord two chord three chord four chord five chord six chord um, and you know what I can do also is um, we could also do if you transpose every one of these chords down a half step I mean a whole step. Capo at the second fret, then it's the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna show you that as well. So if you transpose down a whole step and capo up a whole step, it evens out. That's the trick, all right? So if E is too hard of a key to play in, and you're right, we're gonna have four of the six chords are gonna be bar chords, if you were to play pure triads, okay? Um, and, um, but if you, if you capo, uh, transpose everything down to D, then you only got one bar chord, which is B, the B minor. Um, no, you still have F sharp minor, so you still have two bar chords. Um, and um, Or you could capo, if you want to, you could capo all the way up at the ninth fret and play in the key of G, where you would only have one bar chord, but you're going to be like, eh. So we won't do that. All right. So uh, I'm going to just, just a kind of a, um, a rehash of uh, scale theory. Um, I'm going to make a uh, an E major scale, and so we what we need to create a, a scale is we need uh, to follow this formula: whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay, and we if we start on E, if we go up a whole step from E, we get G flat, no F sharp. We want to keep it the next letter, F something. The next one should be G something, okay? So, the the um, the second, then the next note, okay, would be up a whole step from F sharp is going to be G sharp, okay? G would be a half step. G sharp is the whole step. And then we want a half step from G. Well, G to A, or G sharp to A is a half step, okay? So, so here's the first four notes of the major scale, the E major scale. And that's a tetrachord, if you remember. If you were to play all four of those notes at once, you could call that a tetrachord. And so we're going to create another tetrachord now starting on the next note, which is B. And so we're going to go up a whole step to B. And now we want, again, we did whole, whole, half. We're going to do from B, we're going to go whole, whole, half. So we have the tetrachord thing is, don't worry, there won't be a quiz on this. <laughs> you knew I was going to say it. 
you knew I was going to say it. All right. And, and, you know, Gary, I w you know, what I would do is I would sit down and like take what our lesson in G we did the last three or four days. Um, and I would, I would create a, you know, several pages in your notebook of just various chord progressions. Just, you don't even need to play them. Just start writing them and then play them. You know, you can make it one bar per chord, do four bar progressions, you know, G, E minor, C, D, which is the 50s progression. Write that in there and then twist it around a little bit, write that one there and just make a million of these progressions and then do the alternate chords, you know, do the minor four chord or the minor five chord or the major four and things like that. You can do random uh, things, but also you, you want, you know, the random things will work sometimes, but sometimes they'll be like, eh, that's a little weird. Um, and then you'll be like, I put the A major in there. That's really wants to go to D. Why did I go to, you know, G from there or whatever? So uh, you'll, you'll discover things. But anyway, we're from B, we want a whole step, which is C sharp. And then D sharp, a whole step up from there, and then a half step up from E. So we start on an E, we end on an E. If you got anything other than that, you would be wrong. Okay, so there's an E major scale. All right, so we can we can number those, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Now, when I say the one chord, I mean the chord that is built on the E. And the way you build a chord or a triad is you start on that note and you skip one note in the scale and go to the next one and then you go to this one. So an E triad is E G sharp B. So we're going to E is our, so our one chord is E. All right. Like that. Okay. The next chord is the two chord. We're going to build it on the two. We're going to go F sharp to A to C sharp. That's our F sharp triad. And that happens to be a minor chord. So I'm going to write a small case Roman numeral F sharp minor. All right. There's the two chord. And again, I'm going to give you some uh, cheaters on these. Uh, they're going to have extra notes in them, but they make these chords somewhat playable. And I'm also going to transpose it down and we're going to talk about the D, D chords as well. So that's all we're going to get to today. In fact, we may not even get all of that done. Okay. The next chord is, is built on the G sharp, uh, the third of the scale. So we go every other letter from there and we get G, B, and or G sharp, B, and D sharp. And that's the makings of a minor triad again, G sharp minor. All right. And then the A, the four chord and the five chord are both going to be major. One, four, five progression is a common progression. It's basically the blues, blue, all blues uh, songs are pretty much one, four, five. Um, now the four is A, C sharp, E. And the five is B, D sharp, and F sharp, which is right here. Um, and so that would be the four chord, which is A, and the five chord, which is B. And then the last one we're going to do is the six chord. You're going to be like, well, what about the seven chord? Well, the seven chord is diminished. Rarely would use it. Um, D, the seven chord would be D sharp, F sharp, and A, and that would be a D sharp diminished chord. Really no, not going to use it. The more common chord we might do would be a B chord with a D sharp in the bass. It's kind of a passing chord, but we're not even going to talk about that. Okay, so the, but the, the six chord, C sharp, is uh, C sharp, E, and G sharp, and that's a minor triad. C, whoops, uh, dang it, C. Yeah, I'm just going to cross this out. It's going to be nasty. C sharp minor, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's not sip worthy, though. Sounds like a story is a brewing. What do you mean? What did I say? Good news. Oh, I just got some... Skin in the game for of stocks. Oh, okay. Well, and yesterday the market was down. It was a good buying day. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you do contrarian. Is I'm not. A, I don't recommend day trading. I'm telling you, the day trading thing, and a day trader is someone who's buying and selling all day long. Um, and the 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 rush, the endorphins, the the psychology behind that is almost identical to gambling. So you can get a real, you can have a real problem if you're a day trader. You can develop a problem of of uh, what a gambler might have, and you're like, I can make it this time, or I'll make money today. And it's like, you know, it's if you're not owning anything. I mean, if you if you own a bunch of stocks, you it's really really hard. If you, if all your money is all your cash is in the stock market at this today, and the market's down a thousand points, almost impossible to make any money. You know, you, if you had all cash that day, you know, so that's called timing the market. And it's almost impossible to do. 
Um, in fact, I, I read a stat somewhere. If you, if you were to try to time the market, if you were out of the market on the five best days of the year, you would be flat on average. You take out the best five days of the year in the stock market and uh, <laughs> you're about 50-50. You're like right at 0%. So it's just better to be in and the market generally goes up over time. This S&P 500 is like up 6% year over year on a 50-year moving average. <laughs> so uh, we mean, oh, can't see the notes. Oh, okay, weird. Sorry. Uh, let me get a little closer too. That might help. All right. So basically what I did was I wrote out any major scale on top and then I wrote out the six chords um, that so many chord progressions are based on. All right. All right. So let's talk about these chords. It's probably as far as we're going to get. We're not even going to, I'm going to want to transpose to D. Okay. So I'm going to want to transpose down um, to D. And so if we just go down a whole step on each one of these, I can do that right now. Okay. Uh, D and then down a whole step from F sharp minor would be E minor. Down a whole step from G sharp minor would be F sharp minor. Okay, and the whole step is the same as two frets on the guitar. Uh, down a whole step from A is G. Down a whole step from B is A. And down a whole step from C sharp minor is B minor. So if you, were, if you play these chords, and I'll do it right now with a capo, you're in the key of D. So there's one cheat, okay? To me, that's the cheat I would grab, I'd go for. Because I like the sound. Now, D is not the best key because the one chord, I mean, it is a great key to play in. It's pretty easy. But the one chord is a four-note chord. The nice thing about E is the one chord is this big, woo, you know, Pete Townsend chord. Um, I do a windmill, but I bust my hand on my table. Um, so, I mean, so D kind of has this little, kind of when you finally get... just just dies you know uh, so that's why you know if you can do this then you got now that's an ending okay and what I did there what the chord progression I did there was four five flat major six flat major seven and one all right there was a, in a, a perfect example you know we've got this the four five is a really strong ending, right? Right, that's a really strong ending. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm kind of treating that as a false ending. A, leading to the B flat. That's, you know, I always thought it'd be fun to do a song where you never actually end it. You just keep doing one false ending after another, right? You know, you got like, get to the one chord you just keep avoiding it but you set up you keep setting up the one chord and then going somewhere else I just thought that'd be funny yeah. <laughs> how many false endings what about drop C sharp now I wouldn't do drop G C sharp um, but uh, I have I've done drop C um, but the, the you almost need a heavier string because it's gonna be get really pitchy up and down the neck um, so, uh, okay, so if I capo at the third fret or second fret, and I'm really big at not, at not um, thinking of this as a D chord, because it's not a D chord. Um, this is my cape, one of my capo lessons, but um, the, what I would want you to do is it's not that hard to do. I mean, instead of transposing a song that's in the key of E to D, just learn those chords at the second position. So for example, this is E, all right? So put capo on the second fret. Man, I'm not gonna get nearly as far into this lesson as I want because I, I, there's, so much, there's so, many, uh, so much gold here <laughs> to dig out. <laughs> We're gonna get, dig out some of this. This is, in my opinion, super important. Um, it saves you time um, and it also keeps you from making stupid mistakes. Uh, if I think I'm in the key of D, 
For one thing, I have to go through that chart that's in the key of E, and I have to take every E and make it D. I have to take every A and make it G. And so I've got to go through the chart and change everything. And if it's a chart that's on a on like an iPad, well, then it's even more work. You got to go tap, and then you type it in, and then you tap and type it in. And it's like, oh, man. So, um, or if you have a software, you can transpose it and transpose it to D. That's great. Okay. So now you don't have to type it. You can just one button, you knock it down to, you know, two half steps, you're good. The problem with that is, if you think you're in D, there's a pro tip right here, man. If you think you're in D, go up here. I'm not in D. That D lick is, it didn't work because I'm in E. So what I want you to do, you can memorize six things, right? And we just need those six chords. Neat. Remember, memorize six things. Here it is. Here's thing one. That's an E. If you're, if you're tuned in standard tuning, capo to the second fret, this is an E. Okay, so play E. I told you to put the capo at the second fret. Is your capo at the second fret? Oh, Tom, need more front. Okay, oh, oh sorry, you got. It. Okay, hopefully you got that. Um, uh, oh, you know what? Okay, so okay, so make an E. All right. Now, so I'm going to use two terms. I'm going to move the light a little bit. See if maybe I can get it more in front of me. I didn't leave the room. Don't take a sip. I'm still in the room. I moved the light, so it's a little bit more in front of me. Um, so I'm going to use two terms, uh, what it looks like and what it is. What it looks like is a D, what it is is an E, all right? So we, I want an E chord, this is an E chord. If I'm capable at the second fret and standard tuning, this is an E chord. Okay, this looks like an Okay. All right, so play, play E, play F sharp minor. Is it buff? Hey, I've got green right here, so I'm good right now. 2,800 megabytes per second, so I should be good. Um, okay, now I know you, some of you might have a problem with F sharp minor, but let's go ahead and play what looks like an F sharp minor, but this is actually G sharp minor. We can, if you can't play bar chords, you can skip it. However, remember if you capo, um, bar chords, chords become marginally easier. So you might actually be able to, and the nice thing about the minor is you don't have to put three fingers in front of the bar, so you can use your second finger to help push down the first finger, okay? So this is, so play E, play G sharp minor, play F sharp minor, play G sharp minor, play E, play F sharp minor, play G sharp minor, play F sharp minor, play E. Okay, so you already got three now. You're learning. Okay, the G shape is A. That's easy. So there's your four chord, A, right? On our list of chords in the key of E, or yeah, right there, the four chord, the major four chord is an, is an A. And that looks like a G shape, but it's, this is really an A. So play E, play A, play E, play A. Okay. Uh, so you can put the capo on the third fret there, Gary. Yeah, I, I'm still seeing green down there. I, I haven't seen it go to any other color, but it's just a little teeny box in the bottom, bottom corner of the OBS software, which I'm, which I'm using, because the reason I use the OBS software is so we can go, memories like the corners of a mind. All right, <laughs> I like this one best. <laughs> okay, so that's A, E, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, E, A, G sharp minor, F sharp minor, A, E, this, this is a quiz. So you are getting a quiz right now. <laughs> there is a quiz on this. All right, two more, chord, two more chords, all right? Play the A shape. Looks like an A, but it's a B. Boy, that's the easiest B you've ever played. So 
A is just the G shape. So if you're capo, if you're in standard tuning, capo to the third fret, or second fret, this would be a, an A chord. And this would be your B chord. So we have E, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, E, I'm sorry, A, B. And the last one is, looks like a B minor shape, if we were at the, if we were in open position, but we're actually playing C sharp minor. And that's our, that's the, the sixth chord in the key of E, C sharp minor. Okay, uh, and don't worry, I'm not expecting Kathy, you to be, uh, Catherine, you to be able to do this. Uh, I'm just kind of showing you. This is this is one way of playing in the key of E, because uh, like like I think it was you that said key of E has four bar chords, and you're right. Although I'm going to take the capo off here in a minute, I'm going to show you some cheats for those. Um, and then we're we're so we got all those chord progressions. So then we're in the key of E. Um, you know the one, six, four, five. It should be E, A. Oops, sorry. E, C sharp minor. A, B. No, that's hard to do. Um, so we could also do E, A, C sharp minor, to B. And it's, 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 the key of D is a really happy sounding key. It's a really fun key. It's very campfire, sitting by around the campfire kind of playing key. Uh, e is much more of a rock and roll key. So if I were to play that same progression, what did I do? E, uh, I went E, A, C sharp minor, B. It's a much bigger sounding progression. Okay. All right. Now you can take your capos off. Um... That was just kind of uh, my my goal for you. Uh, one thing you can do, maybe write it down, so, you know, is to try to memorize those six chords um, at the second fret with their new names. So when you play the second fret, you play the D shape. It's really E. The G shape was really A. The B shape, I mean, the A shape was really B. So on and so forth. That way, now, well, and I'll, I'll get, I'm sorry, I'll put my capo back on. You don't have to though. Okay. Um, but now when I'm playing, if I, if I realize I'm in A or E, I'm not going to accidentally play in the key of D. I'm literally seeing e elix all up and down the fretboard, and uh, because I'm thinking I'm in the key of E, not in the key of D. And there's all sorts of fun stuff like. That. And all that was was an E triad on top of an E, a B triad on top of an E, an A triad on top of E, another E triad, another B triad, another A triad. Another E triad, another A triad. I'm sorry, B triad, another A triad. So you can just. Cool, huh? C sharp major, also called C sus second. No. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna do we're not gonna do C sharp major. Yeah, this is Jim. I'm just using triads for the lit. Yeah, it's a, it was a that was a big thing in the '70s. A lot of rock records. A lot, like I think of, um, well, Zeppelin for one. He uh, Jimmy Page did it a lot. Um, uh, but you know, I don't know. Uh, Super Tramp, uh, uh, Ario Speedwagon. Um, you know, a lot of bands use that kind of thing where a drone, that would be called a drone progression, where you, you basically let uh, the low note ring out and then you just start changing chords on. So now, now, I'm at, now I have a D. So it's 
it's kind of fun. Um, all right, so we're back to the KV. Okay, so E chord is. Uh, Oh, uh, you, are you hipping me to um, Margaret's? Or was there another question further up? Oh. <laughs> Do we have to spit and Because <laughs> Because there is a quiz. <laughs> you have to backwash, yeah. <laughs> Gary, add that to the rules. <laughs> uh, all right. Do I need to learn the names? I feel like I'm... I, I, feel, I feel just thinking them... As first, fourth, fifth major, it's easier. Um, Avito, you you can. Um, uh, that's that's not necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, yeah, why not learn the names? Um, that makes you a more well-rounded musician, um, because as part of the dialogue, again, if you if you think of if you think of that D shape at the second fret capo as the one chord, the first chord. Well, how are you thinking? What are you thinking up here when you start playing licks? Are you thinking licks that work over the one chord? Well, what key are you in? So you really do have to know what key you're in um, and what chords you're playing ultimately. And, and especially if you're working with any other musicians. If you're by yourself in your room, I don't care what you do. But, uh, <laughs> don't go there. But if you're, uh, if you're playing with other musicians, you, you're going to want to be able to communicate. You know, you're going to say, what chord is that? Oh, we're playing a, B, a C sharp minor. It's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, uh, the, or they may say, hey, yeah, we're playing, we're playing the six uh, chord in the key of E. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, it's, you just never know. Uh, so the, the more knowledge, the, and you're young, Avito, man, you, you can memorize, pff, dude, you can memorize anything at your age. <laughs> so you can learn them. Um, I, I, but, ba but what, what, but don't extrapolate. Okay. <laughs> Here's a great life lesson. Okay. <laughs> when you're dating someone or when you're first married, don't extrapolate. <laughs> okay. Don't. If they do something that you, that rubs you the wrong way, don't go there and say, don't go to that place in your head and says, I'm going to have to live with that every minute of every day the rest of my life. Right, Bonnie? Right, <laughs> Jim? <laughs> if you do that, you're just never going to, you're never going to settle on anybody because <laughs> you're just going to go, oh no, that one thing would drive me insane for a thousand. Well, the problem, the thing is you eventually you'll stop noticing that one thing. Okay. Now, what do I mean by don't extrapolate in reference to the guitar? Well, Avito, you're thinking that, oh shoot, I have to memorize all the chords on all the frets with all the cape. No, I'm asking you to do one fret position, just the second fret. Normally I would have you do the first fret or the third fret because th those are positions on, with a capo that would get you out of flat keys. Like if I were playing in B flat, I'd capo at the third fret play G in G shapes. You know, I'm thinking B flat, C minor, E flat, and F. In fact, I write a lot of songs in B flat because I love the way that sounds. The key of G sounds great. It's a lot of fun to play in. And the one chord is a nice big six string chord. But also because it's just sonically, it's a great, fits a lot of people's voices better. B is another one. You go up to B and go one more fret up. Um, so yeah, don't, don't extrapolate that I'm asking you to learn every open chord in every position up and down the fretboard. No, just learn second fret for the key of E for this case. And if you can play in the key E, no problem with bar chords, or with some of these cheaters I'm going to show you in the next 15 minutes, then uh, that's really not an issue. But uh, but I, I still I still really like people when they're learning um, to to when they start using a capo to to learn the chords they're playing, not just the shapes. Okay. Okay. So this is E. Everyone pretty much should know this chord, and E is. We only got 31 people. Come on, man. What's going on? You know, I'm not posting it all that I'm doing these things. I probably should do that more. Okay. Uh, so there's your standard E. I don't, I mean, we could talk about a cheat for that, but we really don't need it. Okay. Now the standard F sharp minor is a bar chord. You bar the second fret with all six strings. And so it'd be two. And then you add your third finger on the fourth fret and pinky on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And then, so it's F sharp minor in its purest form is two, four, four, two, two, two. Boom, right? Did I do this right? Oh, no, I did not. Sorry. Two, four, four, two, two, two. All right, you can grab that copy and paste or write it down on a piece of paper. You always smart to have a piece of paper, you know, handy. <laughs> I complained about how many people were watching and I lost someone. <laughs> uh... <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie, for letting Pepper know. Yeah, I, 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 I call D and G kind of the happy keys. You can call them lazy keys, but I call them the happy keys. Um, I, basically, I, I have you know the, the, the five keys of, of C, G, D, A, and E in that order. Those are the order of sharps. You know, C is no sharps, G is one. I generally call G and D my happy keys because I'm happy to be playing in them, which is why I often capo to be able to play in those keys. Um, I call the A and the, the E, key of E, pleased. I'm pleased that the writer of the song thought of the guitar player. And those are great keys for rock guitar, for electric guitar. Um, and C, I'm, I'm, um, C is the, I'm okay with this key, but it's not great because you got that big F bar chord, whatever. But C's a, C's a totally fine, good key. But then when you start getting into the flat keys like B flat, E flat, and F, it's almost all bar, almost all bar chords. So those are my, where's my capo keys, okay? Um, all right, so, so a cheater, I've got a cheater that I like, I actually use all the time uh, for F sharp minor. Um, especially if I'm playing acoustic and I want to uh, kind of keep strings ringing out. Okay, keep in mind we're in the key of E, so the top two strings are are great notes to kind of play off of. Okay, so this one is I play it this way. You could play it this way, but I, I it feels more comfortable for me to play it this way. But basically, this is F sharp minor seven eleven. Um, it's a seven eleven chord. So um, and basically F sharp minor seven slash eleven. Um, and it's 2x2200. Two, 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 zero, zero. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, with my second finger, I'm deadening. <laughs> Man, your solos always be planned. I have a better blessing, Gary. I, I, my blessing would be, my blessing would be, may you always be in the zone when you're soloing. Because you know what I'm saying. It's like when I'm, in the zone is when I come up with my best solos. If I'm thinking too much about it, uh, I don't tend to come up with my best solos, to be honest. If I'm going to be honest about my own playing. And I'm not, I never, I mean, I never really like taking a solo, but a lot of my clients want me to solo. But, um, uh, what did Pepper say? Oh. Oh, I'm glad you're better. Bad Tom. All right, so let's see. Okay, back to this. All right, so this chord is... It really, uh, it really does sound a lot like uh, an F-sharp minor chord in some ways, you know? So it actually is a good substitute. It's one of those few that actually works. And so what you, what you have here is you have the root, nothing, although you could hit the open A string. I just find that having the root in the third down that low is a, gets a little muddy and kind of wobbly down there in the low end. So I usually mute it. And then you have the, the, the second fret on the D string is the E, which is the seventh. And so this is actually, this is where the seven comes from in the name. Um, and then, Learning, learn languages through songs. That's actually a great idea. It's a great way to learn languages. Um, and uh, so the, uh, and then I'm playing another A, or an A here, which is the third, and then the, here's the B, which is that 11, and I have another E. So we have two sevens in here. This is a very E-centric chord. So, okay, the next chord, G sharp minor. Okay, the, the way, you, you know, the purest way to play G sharp minor on the guitar is like this. The fourth fret bar chord, you know, we're, we all know it, we're all afraid of it. G sharp minor would be four, four, six, oops, not four, four, six, four, six, six, four, four, four. So it's a big bar at the fourth fret. I mean, the only, the only thing that makes this slightly easier than say an F or a B flat or a B is that it's a little closer to your body, you know, your, arm, your arm's a little closer, and the strings are a little squishier, okay? So for example, if you wanna, you know, if you push the strings down here at the 12th fret, they're about as squishy as you can get. If you push the strings right up against it, you can't even push them down. If you push, see, part of the thing is, it's, you can't push this, you can't, 
if you touch your fingers touching a nut, you can't get that string to touch the wood of your fretboard. And same thing down here. So the, the further you get up the neck, the squishier, the looser your strings are and the easier they are to push down. So if you're having trouble playing a F chord, you might not have a trouble playing a C bar chord or C sharp. Just because, oh yeah, no, the strings and the frets are smaller, so it means your hand can be a little bit tighter if your hands are smaller, your fingers can be a little closer together. Anyway, but we need a cheater for this. So what's a cheater for? Okay, I have one. You just basically, and part of the reason I like using this fingering for this F sharp minor 7 chord is so that I can move it up here. Now, I could just play that, but it's got an E in it, okay? So this actually, if I played that, if I just went five, or four X, four, four, open, open, okay? This would technically be an E, two, over, and I love this chord, and I would use this uh, probably more likely than I would use the, the G sharp minor, okay? Because oftentimes if you, the three chord is, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, hold on a second. So the, the way I'm playing this is four, X, four, four, open, open. And again, it's, I'm using my second, third, and fourth finger for this, okay? E two over G sharp. Man, I should probably print up. A, I'll, 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 okay, if I get a chance, like I said, I'm going to be busy today. If I get a chance, maybe remind me. Um, I, can, I can write these out on a diagram and then scan it and put it up on the Discord, okay? Um, so, but if, so there's... Sharon song that he got sued about by the uh, by uh, by the Marvin Gaye estate because he he dared to play a one three four five progression with the same groove really no that's not copyrightable and he lost in court and put their put Marvin Gaye's name on it I'm just like man I'm sorry but Marvin Gaye he would never have sued if he was alive he would not have sued he would have, he would have gone oh that's so cool <laughs> he would have liked the song. <sighs> Okay, but, and I, I forget which is which, uh, my brain's not remembering correctly, but one of them, between those two songs, um, the Marvin Gaye one and the Ed Sheeran one, uses um, the, the first inversion one chord, which is this one, right? And one of them uses, the, literally uses the minor. So it actually, even in that regard, it's not the same song. It's not even the same progression. So that would be a, a one, three, four, five progression. With a, a dotted quarter, eighth note push, which I guess now is owned by the Marvin Gaye estate. So we can't do that push anymore. Okay. Um, All right, so that's uh, but the, another cheater. If we want to, if we want something a little closer to the G minor, uh, G sharp minor, the three chord, without sounding like an E chord inversion, put your first finger down here. So it's not easy, but but it is a cool chord. I like it a lot. So this would be technically a simply G minor seven chord. Thank you. We're good too. I can go until Jim shows up. Technically, so this would be uh, G sharp minor seven. Oops, dang it, I did G3 again. G sharp minor seven. All right. And what it is, is four X four, four, zero, two. All right. So that's a great substitute. Um, it's So the notes are G sharp, which is the root, F sharp, which is the seventh. So it's a seventh chord, it's not a triad anymore. There's the third, so there's a major minor. There's another third, so two Bs. But the cool, at least it's got one open string, so it's a G sharp minor seven chord. I'm sorry, G sharp minor chord with one open string. Because in a G minor, G sharp minor triad, it's G sharp, B, and D sharp. Well, there's no G sharp string and there's no D sharp string, but there is a B string. And so that's, get that B string working for you, okay? So we, Even go like this if you want. You wanted to, but that's like that's really. But basically, all I'm doing is playing 
fourth fret up here instead of the second fret. You could do that too. Anyway. Okay, so the A chord, we don't really have a problem with here. Okay. Um, and A is uh, X, oh, sorry, let me write that. Hey? It's X0220. Two, 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 and also, um, um, I, you could do A2, which I really like, which is kind of the top notes of that F sharp minor 711 chord. Okay. So A is open, starting on the fifth string, open, second, 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 open. A2 would be open, second, second, open, open. So we end with uh, two open strings on top. All right, and that would be an A2 chord. And that goes really nice. And that's, the thing about the two chord, in this case, really the technical name for this chord would be A2 no third in parentheses, not quotes, parentheses. <laughs> I'm using air parentheses, not air quotes. Um, and you don't get to take a sip when I use air quotes to say air quotes, okay? That doesn't count. That's, no, you're cheating. All right, so we have uh, A, 2, and then A. Um, it's right there, so, but the nice thing about A2 is there's no third in it, so you can go to A minor. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, hide your love way. Um, also took it to write the same album. Yeah, A sus two, you can call it that. I just call it A two. I mean, A two should technically have a third in it, so it could be like. But that that works. I you know, if, if it's if I'm in a session and there's other musicians, somebody's gonna be playing that C sharp. I don't need to play it. So um, semantics exactly. Okay, so now B is one of our dreaded chords. B is the five chord in the key of E. We're almost out of time here. The five chord B, and that would be two four 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 two. And I, whoops, I have a whole video on this, and I, in the video I have cheats. Okay, well one of the cheats are, like I might play A2 like this, okay? The reason I might play A2 like this is so I can go to F sharp minor, 711. I might go to G sharp minor seven like this, then play A. I might play B like this. So this is really, I'm skipping the bottom string. Second fret, fourth fret, fourth fret, open, open. And this is a B sus. There's a root, fifth, a root, another root, two Bs, and then an E, which is the sus4. You could say B sus4, but that's kind of redundant. You can just say B sus. A veto. Uh, oh. A veto. I've seen players in bands capo only half the strings if they're plucking. Uh, if they're I, Well, yeah, you can do partial capoing. It's hard to do half the strings with some capos, but I, I've done, like, left the bottom string open. You can do that, too. And that's one way of keeping that low E string, okay? Uh, let me see, what capo can I do that with? Um, see, it needs to be like a clamp-on capo, like, uh, and I don't think I have one handy. Oh, uh, no, see, now here's, a, here's what's called a, par a partial capo. This is only covers three strings. This may be what you're talking about. I, I, I've never really found it. I mean, if I wrote a song specifically using this, then sure, but I, I've not found it particularly useful. Uh, oh, here's a, I forgot I bought this capo. Let's see if this works. I don't even know what, I forget who makes this one. What is this? Oh, this is the Diodero capo. So if I capo upside down like this, let's see, kind of works. Used to be tighter. Okay, so now when I play that little, that little D shape for E, I've got that low E, which is nice. Um, and then I can go to G sh shape and it's still A. I go to A shape and it's still B. The only one that's difficult is the two chord, which would be this, normally we just play E minor, but now you gotta reach around and grab this note. So anyway, yeah, I've, I've done that a bit. That I would do a lot compared to the uh, cut, it's that one that only covers three strings of cut capo, okay? So, um, <clears throat> how come you are adding the F sharp on the sixth string for A? Now you mean this chord? That, I'm not, that's not, that's not A. That's, uh, 
Um, that's an F sharp minor seven eleven chord. Okay, and then here's G sharp minor seven. Here's A, and then I do B this way. And if I just slide that B sus up two frets, this is technically a C sharp minor seven. So this is a substitute for the C sharp minor chord, which is here. Okay, so check this out. I mean, I can basically I'm leaving all, except with the exception of the G sharp minor seven chord. I'm I'm um, I've got the top two strings open on every one of these chords. Two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord. Okay, so that's all all six of those chords played. Using, a little simpler using cheats. Here's the without the cheats. Hey Max. No, I'm not. I'm just deadening that string. Because I don't want to I don't want to hear that low E string. So I'm just deadening the with my thumb. Okay, so that uh, B cheater, that one one of the B cheaters is B sus. Um, was two four oops, no, X. Starts with an X. Two four four zero zero. Um, and then normally C sharp minor would be like the pure C sharp minor would be X four six six four nah, like that. But the cheater one I did, and I'm going to show you another cheater one before I go. Okay, um, but one cheater would be C sharp minor seven. You could play like this. Yeah, uh, X four six six open open. So you kind of play it like a power chord, but with the open strings. And then another one that you can do that's not, not bad, and I like the sound of this one. Yeah, all the Bs are kind of uh, rubbing on you. Yeah, and it's just, again, these are just cheats on this. Um, if I'm going to talk about chord progression theory, we're going to probably just go to pure triads, okay? So the only reason I'm showing these chords are for people like uh, Catherine, who might have a hard time grabbing an F-sharp minor chord or a G-sharp minor chord. Um, but here's another, um, uh, and if you want, okay, for that C sharp, you could do this. If you want to get rid of that B, you could do C sharp minor. Here's one way to play it, but it's a four finger chord. So you're going to go X, four, six, six, five, open. So you got two E's on top. Oh, wait, I didn't put a space. Okay, don't need a space. Okay, so there's one. So you can write that one down if you want. Um, and then the one, another one that's kind of cool, I like this one, C-sharp, it's another minor seven chord, would be four, two, one, zero, zero. Oops, forgot the X, four, two, one, zero, zero. Okay, and that would be, I'll play it for you right now. I'll play both of those new ones there. So here's the one C-sharp minor. You can see I'm kind of, my first finger, I'm, I'm deadening the sixth string at the same time. Okay. I'm going to touch my face because I'm thirsty. And then this one, I really, that's a nice one. That's a really pretty C sharp minor seven chord. I'm going to C major seven. So I'm putting my pinky on the fourth fret, second finger on the second fret, and first finger on the first fret, where they should be. <laughs> and, then, and then the top two strings are open. Hey, 42 watching. Yeah, I saw it jumped up a little bit. Must have been because I stopped talking about how many people were watching. See, now that I'm talking about how many people are watching, it drops down. <laughs> Zip. We need a baby bottle. We need a baby bottle icon. Um, okay. Um, so, again. Those are the main six triads in the key of E. E, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A, B and C sharp minor. The one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, the five chord, the six chord. The one chord, the four chord, and the five chord are all major. The two chord, the three chord, and the six chord are all minor. This is true for all uh, major keys. So the one, four, five will always be major no matter what key you're in. And the, uh, the two, three, and six will always be minor no matter what key you're in. And again, I said major key, so. That's why. Okay.
Yeah, don't worry about that, Buck. I mean, I, I love doing that kind of stuff. And, and again, my my whole channel kind of transformed a couple of years ago when, when I started getting millions of views of one video for beginners. Uh, I totally kind of shifted what I was teaching more beginner stuff. Although I do want to do a video on the, the hardest lick I've ever learned. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta practice it though. I used to be able to do it and now I can't, I have to practice it so I can do the video. But it's a lick I created and I, I, I regret I ever created it. <laughs> so I wanna do that video. That one's gonna be more for the advanced players, I guess. More of a challenge video. Um, and then, um, uh, so the, um, now if I were to, just to give you a little, um, uh, little preview of what we'll do Monday. Okay, so we'll get together Monday if I can. Um, if I can't, I'll go on to Discord and I'll go on to my Facebook page, which I really haven't done anything on in a while, sorry. Um, I'll go to both of those um, and just say, hey, I'm not gonna be able to, to live stream Monday or whatever, but I think Monday's gonna be fine. I'm just not sure. Uh, question from Vito regarding substitute B with C minor. Hmm. How again are we substituting the B with the C minor? Not doing that. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but let's see, studio, st studio versus teacher. <laughs> oh no, C sharp minor. Yeah, I'm not substituting. I'm just. So, for example, uh, the one, six, four, five progression in E would be E, C sharp minor seven, or C sharp minor, A, E. That's your 50s, classic 50s progression. So, kind of the 90s. Is Classic 90s progression. This is six, four, one, five. Okay, and those are progressions we did in the key of G, and we had fun with. So one of the things we're gonna do, and here's that, here's the chart again. And you can see where I trans transpose down to D, and then if you capo, you can play D shapes and get those chords. So you can go from a, a four bar chord key of E to a two bar chord key of D by capoing at the second fret and playing D shapes, okay? Um, gotta run. Okay, take care, Catherine. Um, all right, so, she's probably already gone. Um, but like some of the, the, the substitutions that we talked about before, like the... Um, minor four. Sound great in the key of E. The that that flat six to the flat seven to the one thing that's very kind of big ender kind of thing is really easy in the key of E because we just have C D. I think that's happy together, right? Is that the right key? I think happy together maybe in the key of E. Or something. I'm, I may be thinking of a different song, but the turtles. Um, so that you know, we're gonna get to those, but uh, so we're, we'll do the, all the subs with the minor, the minor B, B minors. And, I love the minor five chord. This is a cool sound. Now, technically, if I don't ever play the major five chord, then technically I'm really in the key of A, not in the key of E. But if you're, if you, the song wants to end on E, it's really more of an E. The song's more in the key of E. If I were to solo over this, I would probably play E Mixolydian, but don't worry about it. There won't be a quiz on that. See, I need the mug. I'm, I'll get it. I ordered it, so I should get it in about two weeks. So I'll have the mug every time I say there won't be a quiz on this. I won't even have to say it. I'll just hold the mug up, take a sip. I should probably, <laughs> I should probably get a mug for every one of my catchphrases, which I don't know what they are. Um, I would, <laughs> I, the print would be really small, Gary, if I were to put the command sips on there. Uh, it would be, I could probably fit them all on there. I, I should try, but it would like be super small. 
I might be able to put it on two sides of the mug or something, split it up. That'd be hilarious. Yeah, nine chords are great. And add nine, like you can do it. This is technically kind of like an add nine. E, e add nine. I mean, that's kind of a hard chord, but that's what every breath you take is. No, ninth chords. Or I call them second chords. Yeah, write it around the mic. <laughs> uh, Vito, did you ask me a question? Sorry. Uh, how do you... F do you feel we have exhausted... No, not at all. Not even close. Uh, is, you mean the possible progressions? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, probably. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean... And I, in fact, I've, I'm, I'm working... I just got called yesterday by... These, this brother and sister, these young artists, uh, they're both teenagers, but they want to get together and talk about, you know, music creation. They're, um, they're singers, they're actors, but they're also singers and they want to do music for a living and uh, release records and stuff like that. And so we're going to, I'm going to do a little bit of coaching on the guitar, but I'm also going to talk about pop music. And the thing is, Avito, um, as far as chord progressions go, yeah, if I were to do four beats of each chord for four bars, then yeah, every chord progression has been used. But the thing is, <laughs> every blues progression is the same three chords, okay? And have they stopped making blues songs? <laughs> Not even close. Um, there's more blues records coming out. Um, and uh, Jim just said, I'll be at your house in five minutes. Um, so uh, there's, there's probably more blues records coming out this year than any year previous because there's more people recording and have home studios and stuff. So, um, so it's really, hey, Glenn, Rockford, Illinois. My dad's from, uh, was from Chicago, uh, outside of Chicago in uh, 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 Hinsdale. Uh, I think he went to Hinsdale High School. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I wonder if they have something like that. They had a lot of... Look up Teespring and see what they have, Ed. We could do a t-shirt. A t-shirt would make sense. Um, so, uh, um, but one of the things is, you know, we talked about... Um, I could play... Um, basically a one progression, one chord, flat major seven, six chord, oh, uh, a uh, four chord, the A, um, E, D, C sharp minor, okay, A. Now actually, I can't think of a song that uses those chords played that way, but again, we're, we're, when we're doing these chord progressions, we're doing very, very, shall we say, vanilla approaches to these chords, right? But if I take those exact same chords and make it into more of a riff, and, and, and one of the things I was talking about these kids, and I'm, we'll be talking about, I'm always, I'm always, this is only true of songs that are hits or known, played a lot, okay? But every song that is, a, is that we know, uh, that we know collectively, okay? Um, generally has a hook. Now the hook doesn't have to be a melody. The hook can be a lot of things. It could be a bass line. Here's a hook. That's a hook, okay? A hook could be a rhythm. Uh, I, I'll tell you a hook. Here's, I just was talking to my wife about this last night. So this is a great example of a hook, okay? I um, heard a song on the radio um, on K-Rock here in Los Angeles and I Drove straight. I couldn't remember the song. My brain is awful at that kind of stuff. I couldn't remember. I drive straight to Tower Records. This will tell you how long ago it was. I go to upstairs to the Tower Records and um, in Pasadena. I go up there. I talk to someone. I say, I just heard a song on the radio. I can't remember anything about it. But it sounded like when the electric guitar came in, it sounded 
like a car engine was starting. Kunk, 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 like that. And he goes, oh, that's Creep by Radiohead. I said, that's what, by who? I've never heard of Radiohead. The kid, this kid at the store, of course, knew him. And the hook on radio on Creep, in my opinion, is that guitar. Kunk, kunk. It sounds like a car, you like you put a microphone inside a car engine that wouldn't start. And you're turning it over and just goes, cha-chunk, cha-chunk. I mean, listen to the, the original recording, you know, because I'm a creep. And they, they hate this song. Radiohead does. But it's a great example of the one major three, four, four minor one. It's a great example of, of some of these chord substitutions that we're talking about. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my E, D, C sharp minor, A chord. Okay, so we can play that progression. Okay, we can write a song around that, um, but you can take that progression and play it a different way and it becomes its own entity. Now, in my head, almost I almost think that the hook of that song is that, or you can even break it down smaller. The hook is, because <laughs> that's just like, I don't know if they do that. Now I have to listen to it, but it's like, that's how we always played in high school. But that's a hook. And it's not, it's not always, it's pretty rare that the hook, the hook is usually the chorus melody. But by usually, I mean maybe 30% of the time. Uh, because, you know, that's definitely the hook. That's copyrightable. That's not just a guitar part. Um, a good, great example, I think, of a hook is um, uh, that the writer didn't get credit for was Carol Kay, who played on The Beat Goes On. They, see. They had written. Beat Goes On. That's what they had written. And she goes, that's so boring. That's boring. How about if we do this? That's the hook. The beat goes on. The beat goes on. I mean, there's not a whole lot of melody there. There's not a whole lot of anything going on. No, the hook is that bass line. Carol Kay should have been a millionaire from that. Uh, the drop. Yeah, the drop. The first time the drop happened, it was a hook. But every time after that, it was derivative. <laughs> the drop is not a hook anymore. Trust me. Uh, Blues Travelers had a song called Hook. Um, oh, it does it? It actually talks about the hook. Yeah, you're right. The hook on that song is actually him. Here's the thing. The hook is, and I, I used it, it was a perfect example, the, the radio head thing. The hook is the thing that gets the kids calling the radio station saying, hey, can you play the song that does whatever? I like for example is uh, my friend, um, uh, my friends wrote the song um, Umbrella for Rihanna. And originally they wrote it for uh, Britney Spears, but she didn't like it. Bad idea. And then Mary J. Blige recorded it and then put it on a record. And then before the record came out, they dropped it. And they probably thought, this is the worst day of our lives. And it was the best thing that ever happened to them. Don't ever think that sometimes a bad thing is a, is a bad thing because it could be a good thing. And Rihanna, they were, they were working with Chris Brown in the studio. And Rihanna, they played Rihanna the song and she loved it. It became her biggest hit ever. And the hook on that was the like, kids would call up the radio station, hey, can you play the Ella, Ella, Ella song? That's the hook. It's Ella, 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 hey, hey, hey. That's not even a melody. It's not even, it's after the chorus. It's a post-chorus hook is what I would call that. So the hook could be a lot of things. I mean, I love trying to decipher, you know, pick any song, like I said, that collectively we all know. It can't be some obscure song because a lot of obscure songs are obscure because they didn't have a hook. And no, there was nothing for somebody. You know, the hook is the thing that grabs you and pulls you into it. It's all a hook is. And it, like I said, it could be, it could be a sonic. Um, Where Are You Now by Justin Bieber. I really think the hook was the production. But that, 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 that percussive thing that, that, goes in, that it goes into going, I think, back into the verse or something, coming out of the chorus, that was the freaking hook. And it was just some program thing that they did that just sound, sounded freaking amazing. Um, so... Uh, let's see. Uh, Bert Gamer has some songs that have cool hooks. Oh, okay. 
Oh, that's it. I didn't. I don't. I'm not heard of the camphor song uh, sound. So, uh, let's see. All right. So I'm gonna take off. Jim's gonna be here in a minute. Not you, Jim Lee, but my friend Jim Cavell. So we'll um, we'll pick up this. We'll go to. Um, uh, we'll go. We'll go into um, in the key of E. We'll do some the. We'll swap all the minors and the majors and the majors and the minors. Okay, we'll do that with the KV and we'll come up with some fun, like I showed you, some fun, fun progressions with that. Okay? And, uh, yeah, make, make a notebook of just progressions and have fun with it. And then know that you could do, sure, four strums per chord, but you could take a chord progression like the 50s. Sorry, I'm, I'm not finishing here, am I? Uh, I could, you know. Right? The 50s. I could change the uh, that is the same chord progression, but I just changed on every beat instead of every chord, uh, every four beats. Okay, or I could push. So, Avito, to answer your question, yeah, you, maybe all those basic chord progressions have all been done before, but that doesn't mean you can't create something amazing out of it. I mean, there's a thousand songs, a million songs that use the one six four five progression. There's a billion songs that use the one four five progression. Um, there's uh, a million songs that use the six four one five progression. So, yeah, you can never know. But anyway, okay, so I got to sign off because I got to get back to working on the house. Oh, look, everybody disappeared. I put the guitar down and everybody's like, oh, no, lesson's over. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you soon. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.